Pinches of power. <laughs> I got saved by my pinches of power. everybody I'm afraid to do my hey welcome to late to the party uh where we have three uh let's see baby boomers and three infants that are going to uh, <laughs> give a review of this week's movie pick <laughs> uh so for here at the house it's uh liz and josh great scots mr the great we got Mr. the Great, and we got the Caveman. Go out at it, guys. I'm Isaac. I'm Jason. And I'm Jose. Mr. the Great. I like that part. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. the Great. <laughs> that guy. All right, so today's uh, pick, this week's pick, is Goonies, which came out in 1985. It was directed Ooh. by Richard Donner. The screenplay was actually written by Christopher Columbus of Ye Olde Harry Potter and... Oh, I was going to say fame. Discovering America fame. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh... Wow. Well, Man, I got it. Talking about That's right. You had a discovery process over the Atlantic. All right. And the story was written by Steven Scooper, who was also produced and... Uh, yeah, he was also the producer. Uh, starring, like, there is a whole group of everybody's in this movie. Uh, Sean Austin, Josh Brolin, Corey Feldman, Martha Plimpton, uh, Jeff Cohen, uh, Ki Hu Wan Kwan, I always, short round, uh, and, <laughs> and Carrie Green. Also, on the Fratelli side, we've got Robert D Davi, Joe Pantoliano, and Ramsey, and John McTuzak. Hey, you guys! <laughs> you guys <laughs> practice that sure. before you guys you got on. That. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, um, I guess we'll get started right into this. I'm actually curious because the only person I think that hasn't seen this movie was Jose. Jose, what did you think of this movie? Well, Liz, thank you, first off, for finally getting me to sit down and watch this thing. Um, I had very, very high expectations, and I think that was a uh, that was something I shouldn't have gone into with it. Uh, it's cool. <laughs> um, I liked it. It was a cute kid story, um, but that that's that, that's all it really was for me. I don't know what I was expecting out of it. I was expecting this really epic, amazing. I don't know what the heck everybody talks about the Goonies and all that, but um, it, it was a cool '80s kids movie. Fair enough. Yeah. It seems to be the opinion of most of my friends and people that I know that see it as an adult for the first time. They didn't have the, didn't see it as a kid, so it didn't resonate with them as as much as it does with, I think, a lot of kids. And it made me a little right, sad, so... to be honest. <laughs> that, it, I, that it didn't Sorry. hit me like that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I was hoping it would hit me like that, but maybe I watched it too late. Um, but yeah, it, it, was, it was a cool uh, kids movie. Everything was tied up in a neat little package, and uh, yeah. Yeah. I All right. Well, like, for... I feel yeah, like this it. movie you had to have watched as a child and grow grow up with it and love it and all the nostalgia that you see everybody loving about. And when you watch it as an adult, it's not gonna resonate and take you back to that age because you didn't watch it at that age, like. You, when I watched this movie, I was like, dude, that'd be so awesome if me and my friends can go on an adventure like that. But we never did. But when we get on our bikes and we'd like go around the apartments, I would feel like I was going to be a Goonie and find maybe a treasure and stuff like that. And I've watched it multiple times as an adult, but it just takes me back to that nostalgia feel being a young kid watching that movie. And as you can see, the adults in the movie are either parents or the bad guys. And that's yeah. it. And the cops. And it's all authority figures and the bad guys. And if you're an adult watching this for the first time, of course, it's not going to speak to you as much as somebody who grew up watching it. 
So I can see where you're coming from with that and everybody else who watches it as an adult for the first time. This was the first time for me watching it as well. Um, oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that, sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. Um, you know, I've seen like the the family guy like make fun of it or you know like there's there's lots of cultural references to it throughout like so much so much stuff um but i liked it i thought it was cool i was really expecting myself to hate it and the first i don't know 15 minutes i was like ah this this movie kind of sucks and then i found myself really getting into it and i i, I actually ended up liking it a lot so I don't know. I, I seeing is seeing it with fresh adult eyes was fun, and it and it did take me back to the eighties in a way that I was never there. <laughs> <laughs> I get what Does you're saying about up? them. The first Does the first fifteen minutes. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say. Well, now the three of us who probably saw it as kids does it does that movie hold up? For you? Um, well, it, it, the, like Lego was saying, the first 15 minutes, it's a slow roll into it. Like, uh, Lego, the, the Goonies is the kind of movie where no matter how old I am, whenever I'm flipping through the channels or I see it on there, I put it on and I watch the rest of it. But this is like the second time that I've started it from the beginning and watched it all the way through. And the beginning is a slow roll. It really is. So, but once the adventure starts, I remember, like Isaac was saying, being a kid, we would get pieces of paper and we would draw treasure maps on them and then we would like, rub dirt into them and stuff and try to hide them so that our friends would think they really found a treasure map. And, uh, you know, that was part of the times when we were going out making punji pits and things like that. I really think that was influenced by, by the Goonies. So it was a big deal. At 85, uh, we were all 10 years old at that time. Um, that's like when the third series of G.I. Joe came out, when Snake Eyes got Timber and, you know, uh, they, they were killing Optimus Prime. So there's a lot of cool things going on in that time for us. But uh, super nostalgic. I mean, we got to catch up a little bit with Short Round when he got older. And, uh, you know, that was another dose of Corey Feldman before we got to see him in all of those movies. You know, I think this is like... Uh, one of our first adventures with with Corey Feldman before he was with the Lost Boys and Licensed to Drive and all of those movies that he was in, um, just super influential. Like, <clears throat> and then there was a really good Goonies game on uh, on Nintendo Entertainment System, so it was just there was always something to draw me back into it. So super nostalgic today could it be made today 100 percent, absolutely and i don't even necessarily know that you would have to do too much i think that if you look at the the deleted scenes or when they're on the beach and uh and data's talking about there was a giant octopus there's they did they had an octopus scene a giant octopus scene that they put pulled out of the movie i would say that if they were to do it today they could put the octopus scene in there because it would work out but the uh, the deleted scene it's horrible. It's got like like a, a janky tentacle that like flops around. <laughs> you can't it's it's no good, but you know, you could upgrade things a little bit, but the practical effects in it were amazing. Even what they did with John Matuzak's ears and all that stuff, it was it was solid. So a hundred percent that movie could be made today. I mean I watched it with Gwen and she had never seen it all the way through before. And she sat through the whole thing, and, and that's that's a that's a testament to the to the staying power to get Gwen to sit through a movie. <laughs> what about you? Uh, I I think I think there's a heavy nostalgia effect on the uh, on the movie, and in terms of watching it, and and I think that it does hold up over time. Uh, I've watched this movie dozens, if not over a hundred times in my lifetime, and I'm never. I'm never watching the movie and thinking like, you know, it's like diminishing, uh, the, like the next time I watch it, it's always fantastic. I'm always interested from the first moment of the film. Um, I, I think we have the ability to make a movie like this today. I don't think this movie can be made today. 
And I don't think it can be made today because I don't think kids today can resonate with that sort of sense of adventure. You know, when we were kids, we were allowed to ride our bikes everywhere. I mean, I rode my bike from Anaheim to Huntington Beach and back. Um, the, That's true. You had you had all this kind of freedom. Can you imagine a Goonies movie made today with kids that have helicopter parents and the kids got cell phones and they're forced to wear friggin' face masks wherever they go and yes, you know they they, they have planned get-togethers <laughs> with their friends and you know everybody's doing stuff on Skype. Like there would be no adventure, no adventure at all. It would be the most boring friggin' movie. It'd be like, you know, uh, it, it would just be awful. I don't think we could do a movie like this because those times don't exist anymore. They just don't. Right. I, no, I agree. Like, um, I, it's funny because this time I, watch, I was watching it more with like a critical eye before. When you sit down, you just want to be entertained, have fun. I know everything that's happening in that movie. And I thought I knew all the lines and the next scene. And, and then, but when you sit, and I was actually, li like, like I said, watching it with a critical eye. And I just, you pick up little tidbits, like here and there, that little phrases, little things in the background. Mm -hmm. And you watch the other actors. You're not watching the actors that are doing, like, the, top, the dialogue. Like, the scene <laughs> where, where they break the statue. And they're, like, trying to hide it from... The, 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 Mom. the, no, the, um, the help. Oh, <laughs> uh, Rosalia. Rosalia. <laughs> when she comes in and she's like looking at the, just the expressions. If you watch her, like her expressions and her interactions with little bit, like I never picked up on yeah, that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. Busy. Yeah, there's tons of stuff that's happening in the background that, and just little phrases here and there, you know, oh, you're an adopted whistle. I'm not an adopted, you know. Just little, just little things like that throughout the entirety of the movie that just, uh, that I liked a lot more. Like this time around, like I, I, I enjoyed it. It holds up for me all the time. Like I love these kinds of fun adventure, uh, type things. Like, like you guys said, we had friends that we would make maps or we would, you know, just go out and pretend we found stuff or somebody would go bury something somewhere and the rest of us had to go find it you know things like that it was a lot of fun um could it be made today i i'm with nate that it could be i don't think it should be part of the reasons why josh brought up too is it's just there's you know kids with gps and uh, <laughs> they can't they can't do that stuff anymore and i don't think i don't think they know how to Unless, unless, the, unless parents are teaching their kids those types of fun things, I don't think kids on their own will go out and do those types of things on their own. It's, I think it's, a, it's an acquired uh, teaching skill, not, a, not something that's inherent in kids now. Um, so, anyway. Uh, I know that there was talk about them doing a sequel to this movie, um, present day sequel. They were just going to go back and, and refilm and do, or, you know, where are they now type situation, but I don't think they're going to be doing that anytime soon, unfortunately. So, how about the best and worst scenes in the movie? Jose? It's uh, funny that everyone was saying that the, it starts off kind of slow and that at first it's a slow burn. Uh, but for me, actually, that, that whole opening from the jailbreak scene to the uh, introduction of each one of the characters, kind of showing us who they are and the and, and what the role is. You know, uh, I love that. The, the you know, it's the whole car chase goes through the entire town, and that we get a small glimpse into each one of the characters' lives. I, I love that. I don't know what it was that that was just the uh, like for me that was the best scene um, because it also I mean, <laughs> like what are the what are the chances of timing your uh, escape from jail with the race on the beach that you're gonna blend into so perfectly <laughs> reminded me of the scene in uh the dark knight when the joker escapes with that tour of uh school buses like how did he know that that whole field trip was going to be taking place there and it's like oh this this is where they got it from <laughs> like how did they know that that whole race was going to be happening at that time um but it was just that that whole sequence was brilliant i loved it i loved the intro so i'm gonna go with that opening scene as my uh as my favorite what about worse we'll do back to back on everybody at the same time <laughs> uh worst scene crud <laughs> i'm trying to think because i like i didn't i didn't i didn't 
dislike the movie. Um, but I just thought it was a little premature for the dad to rip up the, the, the what is it, the eviction papers. Because I'm like, you have no idea what those jewels are going to be worth, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're celebrating a little bit too quick. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, man, what the? What the hell's the entire, like, what's the whole town doing on the beach anyways? Like, they even brought the maid along. Like, <laughs> like what was that about? <laughs> and then it's like, she's still doing her job. Um, worst scene, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I, there really was, like, something that stood out to me as, like, the worst scene. Because, like you guys said, I mean, it, it, it was a cool movie. I felt um, maybe if they would have included that deleted scene that Nate was talking about right now, because that, that does sound a little, uh, like, that probably would have been garbage, but um, I don't know. I, I I don't think there was really like a absolute worst scene for me. Uh, might have to come back see if I can think of one. <laughs> Isaac, my favorite scene is uh, when they're in the well and the the girls getting ready to leave, and he's like, "No, we can't leave. Like we we're like down here, and we got to like do what's going on down here. We need to finish our adventure. We can't go up there. Like up there, everything's it. That's it. We're done." Let's at least get this adventure done with, like, and she's like, we're going to die. And he's like, Goonies never say die. And that was just like, that always brings me back to being a kid and seeing that. And it was like, wow, that's powerful. Like, you don't say die. You just keep going regardless. Worst scene? I don't know. I, I don't have a worst scene of this movie. I, I like it through and through. Like, I don't look at a scene and like, oh, this is boring. Like, the beginning, like Jose said, I, I love the beginning, too, because that was perfect. But I don't have a worse scene for this movie. I want to want to see what Lego and Nate have to say. <laughs> oh, Lego. <laughs> <laughs> um, worst scene of this movie. I don't know if there's a scene that just stands out. Um, there's there's definitely some blunders like uh, the fat kid. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. Um, <laughs> Chunk. Chunk. <laughs> yeah, fat kid. Chunk. Yeah, fat kid. Yeah. <laughs> Chunk. That's way less lazy. Fat kid. Um. He. Uh, he's. The, it's right when they're first breaking into the house, but they're like, "Hey, let's get some good old product placement in here." <laughs> oh, he wants a soda. Oh no, there's no soda in this box, and it's like ah. Um. And they they really harped on him with the product placement, man. They they had him giving the candy bars out and all that kind of stuff. So th those scenes kind of were a little whack to me. But uh, overall, the movie was pretty pretty solid. There was no scene that stuck out that was like, ah, you cut that, cut that. What about your best scene? Best scene was probably the octopus scene that got cut. <laughs> <laughs> the moon walking octopus. <laughs> that is a walking contradiction. <laughs> no, I Nate? liked. Oh, sorry. I, no, no, no. Go, go for it. I, I really liked. Um, I liked. I liked. Uh, damn, I don't know what I liked. <laughs> keep it going keep it going guys Fuck i it. am shocked Your turn, Nate. <laughs> i am absolutely shocked nobody's mentioned the truffle stuff yet. nate you gotta help us out with the editing on that little bit <laughs> yeah the, the the bad internet shuffle yes <laughs> <laughs> The cutout. All right, Nate, what's your best worst? All right, best scene is uh, the Goonies all got off the boat, and the Fratellis are kind of fighting amongst each other, and they're trying to trick Sloth by uh, doing the jump rope thing, and then Sloth, like, slams them together, and he pulls his shirt open, and it's got Superman, and they're like, oh, no, and uh, it's a Warner Brothers movie, and it's got the Superman music, and it was just... Yeah, I don't know. It had something for me. Like, yeah, as a kid, <laughs> it still resonates. Um, I was even looking for some Superman cool. shirts. I was going to rock one for the video, but I couldn't find one. Um, I know. It's very cool to you, Cole. I'm not a Superman fan. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're a Sloth fan. 
<laughs> Superman <laughs> fans don't wear Superman shirts. What? <laughs> <laughs> they're they're not a uh, they're not bowing down to the to the corporate sponsorship. I think that's Lego's kryptonite right there. I'm gonna have to find a, something that has a ton of like toys. <laughs> <laughs> Just put All a right, Star Wars so movie first. on for him. <laughs> Which was crazy because he gave the fifth element a 10, and that one was all full of McDonald's. So I guess there's a, there's a loophole in it. Um, something I didn't like? I, I, I don't know if there was anything I didn't like. Um, it was fun. I mean, through and through. Like, there's a, you know, after, and when we talk about the beginning being the slow burn, I guess it's not really the beginning beginning. It's kind of like after they all meet at the house. You know, I guess something that I thought was a little bit weird, I don't think necessarily think it was a bad part, but uh, Mikey's in the house with his brother and uh, Mouth pops at the door and he lets him in. But then Chunk shows up, but Chunk has to do the, the truffle shuffle to get inside. And uh, how come Mouth just was at the door. Does he, does Mouth have like a secret entrance? He just like jumps the fence, line? bro. <laughs> he just hop the fence, bro. The, the chunky kid can't jump the fence. He'll get stuck. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's why. And he was all full of pizza. He had just came back from the pizza parlor. That's true. Thanks for hey, thanks for clarifying this movie. That that that's been a mystery for you know uh, <laughs> thirty five years. All right, Josh, best and worst. Uh, for me, the best. So when I was a kid and I saw the Goonies, the, the Goonie that I, I loved the most was Data. I loved it, all of his gadgets, the fact that he was into James Bond and had all that stuff. And so I, I like all the scenes when he's got some kind of like gadget to pop out to help them in a particular situation. It never really works out. But at the end, when they're on the pirate ship and, you know, he tries to do the the, the boxing glove and it hits him in the face and it doesn't work and then he fires off the pinchers of power and it, just angry. it grabs him like right on the nutsack and what I find really funny is that you know he's like screaming because this like these teeth are on his nuts and his brother comes over with a sword to like help try and I, I would be like bro get that away from my nuts it's a sword <laughs> so um yeah everything that has like data in it is is fantastic um as for the worst scene in the movie, uh, this is going to echo uh, one of my big problems with uh, with these Spielberg movies, and that is at the very beginning when you've got this chase scene going on, like right in the middle of it over this beautiful Oregon beach, you have these letters, Kathleen Kennedy. It's <laughs> like the biggest crap stain in the history of film, right there emblazoned on this fantastic movie, forever tarnished me. This is just awful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not a scene in the movie, but a producer. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I think uh, my favorite scene has to do with the, um, anytime the two Fratelli brothers get together, like, all of those scenes yeah. are great because the two of them getting so mad at each other like just at the very beginning of the movie too it's it's that whole don't don't lift the lamp i'm not lifting it just unlock it just you know that kind of situation and then it moves to you're always taking his side mom and then she points a gun any of the fratelli scenes i like a lot all of those little clips that you see of their family progression all the way through is is great and i love ann ramsey you know throw mama from the train i love that lady she, she's great um kids suck kids suck <laughs> <laughs> get, get into the hole <laughs> i'm not going down there mom and then she pulls a gun on her kid into the hole all of that was really good um worst scene i, I honestly i don't think again i like with what everybody like i don't have a worse scene i think the only thing because i was like i said watching it with a critical eye this time it had to do with the editing you could see all of the like they were standing here and doing this so they had this and then not seeing 
in the next scene not seeing that and i guess it's tough to wrangle kids to get them back on their spots mm -hmm. to make sure that they're what they were doing and when they were supposed to be doing it they're just like okay let's just film the scene let's just do whatever okay we got to do a new, new take and then the editing part of that i think that just when i when i tend to watch movies like that with a critical eye i i just i see stuff like that and there was just a lot of editing issues and yeah the worst scene would have been that octopus scene <laughs> that's just like the uh, uh walkman inside of an octopus mouth and playing uh michael jackson and the octopus moon walks away that is the scene <laughs> right there and it's super lame <laughs> but if you get a chance to watch it you should just so you can make fun of it but um it's, it's on yeah. youtube check it out guys yeah, yeah the the making the making of the film we watched that a, i don't know a year or so ago and one of the things that richard donner the director was talking about was just how hard it was to work with all those kids he couldn't keep them on point for very long at all which when you think about it when you look at the way that the movie turned out at the end i mean he did a fantastic job getting what he got out of them if they were so hard to work with um but yeah it, it, it's the making of the film is also a great thing to to check out but i i wanted to ask uh, jose a question if i might and that is okay. i wanted to know i wanted to know if um the spanish that mouth was using was representative of the subtext <laughs> that was down there <laughs> Was it accurate? Was he talking about sexual torture devices and stuff? <laughs> uh, see. Do you, re do you remember? <laughs> he put in an English caption. He didn't know. <laughs> You're forgetting. I didn't know how to read English then, so I don't know. I gotta go no, back and look at know. look it up. But but mouth was, mouth was Spanish. speaking Spanish, so I'm, I'm wondering if it was genuine. Josh does that in movies like that. When they speak German, he like makes sure that they're actually speaking proper German yes. and not just saying German words just to say German yeah, words. Yeah, sometimes older movies, when, when you look at the way that they speak the language, that's not how you speak it. And so it comes off like real choppy or it's just incorrect. And so I was wondering if when Mouth is speaking to Rosalita and telling her that, you know, the, the marijuana goes in the top drawer <laughs> and the cocaine and the heroin in the middle drawer and then, you know, whatever on the bottom. And it's like, is he really saying all of that or is or are they just throwing in the, the subtitles just to make you laugh, you know? No, it was, it was, it was, uh, all that. yeah, he said all that. He says oh, he all that. Yeah, he's saying everything. It's, it's very broken Spanish, but he's saying it. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Cool. Nice. <laughs> well, I'm just, it's, it's but, kind like, of funny seeing the beginning of this movie, um, you know, with the actors that are in it and how a handful of them have gone on to like, bigger and better things and i was like looking at the lit well some of them had better uh brighter stars like sean austin and josh roland <laughs> recently but you know it was, it was amazing seeing how many like even like the mom from this she's like the mom in every 80s movie that's ever out there we were we were ticking off all of the times we see her as the the typical 80s mom she was gonna she was the psychologist in the yeah, movie movies, movies which were all richard donner movies because she married the director <laughs> <laughs> so she had an insight on that one so all right any last thoughts or comments on the movie free for all it was fun times fun movie good times <laughs> Oh, was, Lego. What was happened, it, Lego? <laughs> was it the palate cleanser you were hoping for, Nate? Pinches of power. <laughs> I got saved by my pinches of power. <laughs> but she used on the nut sack of the yeah. jelly. <laughs> <laughs> saved him twice. All right. Well, yeah. so I don't get how she doesn't how the how the maid doesn't speak a word of English and the mom doesn't speak a word of Spanish and how the hell is she giving her all those instructions to pack up the bags for the vacation? It's like she doesn't understand you. <laughs> Ow. You're not meant to understand it. You're just supposed to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> another another one of my favorite scenes was the was the statue. The breaking of the statue of the mom's favorite part of the statue. Yeah, that's my that mom's favorite there. piece. <laughs> Did you think your mom's gonna notice? It's her favorite piece. <laughs> <laughs> and then they blew it upside down. He's like, "What are you doing?" Kind of pissing, pissing in his face. Pissing in your face. I love how he says it. You guys would all be pissing in your face. Not him. <laughs>
<laughs> the rest of you guys would be doing and then, that. And then when they're all in the cave and they're all pissing together too. <laughs> right. Boys will be boys. <laughs> this is the men's room. That's, right. that's what I'm saying. It's like little things like, you know, little little quips and, and silly little things like that that showed up in the movie. But I, I yeah. I have to watch it again now because I know I've missed stuff. <laughs> I have to go Where back and watch it again. There's a girly scene. It's the, uh, whoa, I had a, I had a Scott moment there. That's the girly <laughs> scene is, we can't take this money. These are people's wishes. Like, they could have been done with the movie at the well. Could have been. They could have been done with the movie by taking the counterfeit money. <laughs> <laughs> Nate with his schemes. Damn it, Nate, why are you gonna ruin a perfectly good thing? <laughs> no, but he could have made a pungy hey, pit and got the Fratellis way earlier. Yeah, he, uh, he does come back though when he says, okay, but I know for a fact this one's mine and I'm taking it back because I made a wish and it didn't come true. Now you're just like, oh, I got you right here, boy. All right, who, who I wish went, I could get all my quarters back too. Who went out and caught the pirate ship? They just kind of like what sailed off into the sunset, like. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> Who's steering that had thing? To go after the pirate ship. When I really was free. <laughs> like I'm out. Oh man, I'd be testing my swimming skills right there. I'd be like, <laughs> oh no! That's what I was thinking too. I was like, why didn't anybody go after that boat and get all those jewels and? Oh man. Ones? Yeah, who gets to claim? Who gets to write the the claim to that? I think the kids get it. I think that's how that works. <laughs> no, actually, anybody would. Once it gets out to sea, if it gets a certain, like, it, it depends on how far it is from the, uh, from the shore. Maritime law, baby. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I think it has to go a certain distance out. I think if it's still within uh, a certain distance of the coastline, I think that, uh, that whoever discovers it is the one, you know, it's like dibs. I think they get rights to it. Dibs. I think that's how oh, it works. Oh, it's, it's I'll the, uh... it, it's fine. <laughs> It's the ancient law of uh, finders uh, keepers. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. That's right. Black, black, no trade backs. Yes, finders keepers. Let it be written. Let it be done. <laughs> <laughs> it is written. <laughs> yeah. So my thing is do like, uh, no, dang it, now you're gonna be thinking about this. So what the what's her face? The uh, the hot chick. Um, Carrie. All right. That's Andy. Her real name. Andy. 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 So what's she hanging out with a bunch of goonies? She's obviously one of the rich kids. So she's not because she she's said she's not a goonie. Animals. She said she wasn't a goonie, and so you know, everybody Basically. else on that that whole beach had even Martha Plimpton's character was because she was like, you know, fishing for crabs inside of a, a tub on the on the dock. Like, I don't think she, she lives she with some vitamin D from Thanos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and sam the white it's inevitable you got a little bit of sam the white as well yeah <sighs> you guys kill me i'm glad i don't have to do this for a while yet all right so <laughs> that concludes our review on this but now we gotta pick the next one and i what Where, where's I, our buckets? We buckets. Oh yeah, buckets. buckets. I forgot to write that part down. Sorry guys, buckets. Okay, so Jose, buckets. Buckets, because I didn't experience this as a kid and I'm salty about it. I'm gonna give this a solid nine. <laughs> and that's and that's going off with Nate's uh let's see, we're looking at the acting and we're looking at everything overall, the uh impact it had and so on and so forth. Uh I'm just being salty because um I, I like I said I had a I, I don't know what I was waiting I, I was expecting something much 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 more epic so uh, we still had a lot of fun still enjoyed it got to see where some of uh, uh, of my other movies get their uh, uh, references from uh, so I'm gonna give it a solid nine. Isaac, ten buckets. I love this movie. Woo! Yay! Yeah. All right, Lego. Uh, I was looking for something to hate when I went into this, honestly. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't find it, honestly. 10 out of 10. This is a good movie. <laughs> what? I want to go here. back and watch ah, it. Oh, we're going. Again. So this, right. this, 
This was a fun one for me, guys. 10 out of 10. <laughs> I see why he gets the hype. Nate? Oh, this is a 10 for me. This is a 10. If I were to have to pick a certain amount of movies to bring with me on an arc somewhere, this one would make the cut for sure. 10 out of 10 buckets. Josh? You know, I, I I would agree that everything about the movie says that it's it's that kind of trendsetter and sets all the standards and everything like that. But it's got Kathleen Kennedy's name on it, man. I can't. I just cannot. No, I'm kidding. It's a ten. It's a ten. What the heck? Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for you to drop it so low. <laughs> well, all right, and uh, this is a ten for me too. I just uh, this movie is everything i want and yeah it's got everything it's acting it's got adventure it's got romance it's got everything everything that a 10 year old liz needed <laughs> and, a, and, a 40, and a 45 year old liz loves <laughs> so <laughs> this is this is definitely a 10. nate do you, do you listen to that soundtrack when you go biking oh yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> Dude, dude. I guess it sounds like his little pedals. Like his little pedals. <laughs> 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 We're gonna have to get you a flag like um like, like Chuck. Chuck has on the back one of those little flag things for your bike. <laughs> <laughs> you should come ride with me, Liz. Uh no, I would probably die on like the first <laughs> bunny hill. <laughs> well, well, if you did go ride with me, all of these thoughts of little pedals and flags. Those would all be exercised from your mind. And it would go I've from seen being... Josh. I've seen Josh come back from those things and no. <laughs> yeah, your, your mind would be, instead of thinking of it being like a little cute thing with flags and little pedals, it would, the, the, your soundtrack in your mind would be a lot more metal. So, I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like super guitar going instead of the little, all right, I'll keep that in mind. No Sydney Lopper in your ears. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so uh, the next person I picked for this, you know, I'm going to let Faith decide. I'm going to be, this is, this is my dream, my wish. Now, heads? <laughs> heads, it's going to be Nate. Tails, it's going to be one of the other chuckleheads. <laughs> so, it's heads. Unfortunately, Nate. You can decide. <laughs> <laughs> just, for just, for that. just to see what was gonna happen, but I'll I've got this. Right on this one. This is gonna be rough. Sorry, guys. <laughs> now, mind you, I had Lego in mind specifically when I put picked these movies. Um. So you guys are all gonna get to go on a. I mean, we still get two categories to choose from, and there's still three categories within there. And uh, some of these movies you can stream and some of you can't. I'm going to take a, a page out of the Scott's book and it's the fuck you find it on your own page. Okay, so category one is love you long time. <laughs> and category two, shut up and dance. Mm. I, I'm gonna vote for "Love You Long Time" right now. Okay. <laughs> Love you it's gonna long be like time. Porn or something? <laughs> it's gonna be '80s porn. <laughs> I'm I'm going in for the the dance uh, or music or whatever it. Shut up and dance. Yeah, I'll shut do that one. Are you shut up and dance? All right, we got <laughs> we got a tie. Take those. <laughs> Damn. Shut up and dance, baby. Yeah. Uh. Jose was the deal. So it's, it's his fault now. Now we have somebody to put it on. That's why I want to go first. <laughs> Every time we decide, I want to go first. I don't want to be the last one. <laughs> My internet froze. You guys didn't hear me the first time. I didn't want to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> Get better internet. <laughs> All right. We've got. I'm going to break a rule, and I'm going to put a sequel up here. You, you could choose. Grease 2. What? <laughs> from, oh Justin, from Justin to Kelly. What? <laughs> Nathan, I'm about to fucking pay 
the fucking hand of doom. You fucking I bitch. I gave my coin toss back. It was actually tails. <laughs> or, or Xanadu. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm going for Xanadu. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, right, there, please, I'll, I'll go with that you. one because they're excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 oh, Jose. I'm only picking Xanadu because if we're gonna go into hell, I'm going in head first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so where's Xanadu being streamed? Because I'm not paying to see that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Xanadu is on the Scotch fuck you list. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> what were our other options? Wait, you got Xanadu? Yes. You got Xanadu? Two. Man, that's Grease gotta be two. good. Grease 2! I want Grease 2. I want to see Michelle Pfeiffer sing. I don't want to see Olivia Newton John sing. <laughs> Olivia Newton John's not in Grease 2. I know. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. Xanadu is is Olivia. To be to be fair, I've never seen any of these movies. I was just trying to find something horrible. I've seen the bookend ones. I haven't seen that Justin and wow. Kelly. Hey, Sandal Bergman is in Xanadu. She was in Conan, guys. Ooh. What the hell? She was what? Valeria. I like that. What what yeah. is what is Justin and Kelly? Can you give can you give us a that is an American movie? Idol movie? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was uh, after the Please first season of American that. Idol. Yeah. No. Was, uh, <laughs> Justin Justin had pretty says, hair. Do you want to see Michelle Pfeiffer sing and dance, or do you want to see Olivia Newton John sing and dance? That's what it boils down to. <laughs> Olivia Newton John's not angry too. I know she's not. She's in Xanadu. Olivia Newton John's in Xanadu? Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, right on. You know, I just I just Googled the most horrible musicals of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I picked them for the list. Xanadu's a struggling oh, artist. I want to see Michelle Pfeiffer singing dance. So it has to be Grease 2. Grease 2. Grease 2. Does my vote count twice? <laughs> Well, what, do, what do we got? What do you we got? Let's roll through it again. Lego, what's your vote? Come on, brother. Come with me. Oh, I don't know where you're at, but I'm I'm gonna go Xanadu. That sounds oh, funny. Yes! <laughs> okay, so Lego Xanadu, Josh oh. Xanadu. I'm going Greasy Grease too, because it's on Prime. Just just on <laughs> DVD. <laughs> <laughs> it's on hey, Xanadu is on Hulu, guys. Boom! Mic drop. Subscription. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's on Voodoo. Oh no, that's also paid. It's on Prime. You can play. You can watch it on Prime. Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, it's on HBO Max. So yeah, we'll pick Xanadu. <laughs> you know what? Screw you guys. Yeah, yeah, but wait. The, the question is, how many of us have seen Xanadu? I haven't. Me. I haven't seen. I it. have. I have. Why are you acting Xanadu. like any of us have? Seen I have it? no idea about Xanadu. It was just in the top three worst musicals you of all time. You're gonna love Olivia Newton John. You got to have to love roller skating, and you're gonna have to love a bunch of weird dance dream singing sequences. Sounds wonderful. It's, yeah, dude. This is, this yeah, is I'm watching the ball. roller skating. I'm gonna get the all of it. Well, that you could have put in that list would have been the Wiz. <laughs> oh my and God. you're talking to a guy who sat the entire beauty in a roll bounce, so I'm ready. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to love this video. I'm going to love this next video. It's gonna be so this good. next video is going to be epic. Is this, like our, is this like an anniversary issue for us or episode for us? I mean, are we, are we there yet? Yeah, see, let's, Jose. Yeah, there you go, buddy. You got it's a little bit episode, It's gonna be episode fifteen for Xanadu. I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to get one of those filters in the background where it does all the sparkly like rainbow <laughs> crap in the background of all of us so that oh man. This is bad. <laughs> hey for 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 the thumbnail, I'm gonna put on some roller skates and jump up in the air like <laughs> Yeah, can we all do a freeze frame jump for the end? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh all right, let's wrap this one up, Nate, you're going to pay for this one, brother. 
Just saying. <laughs> For sure, you're on my shit list now. I've been <laughs> I've been paying, man. I had two zeros back to back. Oh. I didn't have a third. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Your next one is crap. You know, you know, Nate. I'm a firm believer that there's two kinds of people in this world: those that say I suffered, so no one else has to, and those that say I suffered, so everybody else has to as well. And now I know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's close All this right. out before we get too crazy. So, for Late to the Party, I am Liz. And Josh. Great Scott. I'm Isaac. I'm, I'm Jose. Jose. Nate the Great. We'll see you with Xanadu next week. <laughs> yeah. For sure. <laughs> oh, man, that soundtrack's going to be awesome. <laughs>